we start with the DNA molecule of E. coli. Since E. coli is a type of bacteria, it has a circular origin. To begin replication, two helicases travel to the winded DNA. They wrap around the structure and cause the DNA to start unwinding. As the DNA unwinds, it becomes overwound through the rest of the molecule. To prohibit overwound DNA in replication, the protein topoisomerase binds around the DNA in front of the helicase. As the helicase unwinds the DNA, two replication forks are created. DNA replication will begin in both directions from 5' prime to 3' prime at each fork. Located at each fork, there is one lagging strand and one leading strand. The leading strand proceeds from 5' prime to 3' prime, while the lagging strand progresses from 3' prime to 5'. Prime. While the leading strand requires only one RNA primer, the lagging strand has to continue adding primers so it can have a 3' three, 3' three hydroxyl group. To begin the process of replication, RNA primers bind to the single strand of DNA and makes a primer that will transcribe the first sequences of DNA. Next, the primase is removed and DNA polymerase 3 binds to the free 3 hydroxyl group at the end of the RNA primer. DNA polymerase 3 will then produce DNA corresponding to the given nucleotides in the DNA sequence until it hits an Okazaki fragment, which is a new stretch of DNA where DNA polymerase 3 has started another DNA sequence. Once the DNA is replicated, the DNA polymerase 3 unbinds to be replaced by DNA polymerase 1. The DNA polymerase 1 will then hydroxylize the RNA primer, swapping it for DNA. Finally, DNA ligase will catalyze the formation of the phosphodiester linkage that will join the various Okazaki fragments together. This continues through the entire DNA molecule. At the end of DNA replication, there is two DNA molecules. Each contain one parent strand and one template strand. That's all, folks.